What up gamers, Laz here, and Grandmaster Nightfalls have finally returned, and oh boy did they return with a vengeance. Glassway is a tough one, so let's break it down piece by piece and get through this GM together, shall we? Glassway was first introduced a few seasons ago and it quickly became infamous for how tough and unforgiving it was. You don't want to get caught out of position and one mistake can easily turn into a wipe. So let's jump straight into the team comm. I think there are multiple combinations that all could work well, but I'm thinking two banner shield titans with Ursa Furiosas and a Shadebinder Warlock will be the most consistent across the board. I personally ran Eye of Another World on my stasis lock, but you could also use Verity's Brow. I think having one person dedicated to both champ mods will be a huge benefit, although I usually do knock on double primary loadouts. But because of our mod options this season, I think it's semi-necessary here. Remember, if you play on PC and don't have a fire team to clear GMs, I'll be doing GM helps every weekend all season long during my streams on Twitch. Stop by and let's get you that Conqueror title. For weapons, I'm not exactly thrilled with our options, but there are some decent ones out there if you have the right rolls. Because our options are Overload Hand Cannon or Overload SMG, I'm going to recommend using a Hand Cannon, and if you have one with Explosive Payload, that will guarantee a two-shot stun. Personally, I used a Fatebringer, but you could use a True Prophecy, a Seventh Seraph Hand Cannon, or any other Hand Cannon that you enjoy using. For barrier mods this season, we have the choice between Auto Rifles and Scout Rifles. This may come as no surprise, but I don't think auto rifles are worth using in the current sandbox, so I'll only be recommending scout rifles for barrier. And again, if you have explosive payload, you're in the money. For my clears, I didn't run barrier myself, but things like Nightwatch or Vouchsafe with explosive payload, or an Eternal Blazon with disruption break would be my suggestions here. Oh, you could use a Madrugada, and no, I'm not memeing here. This is my go-to solar scout for GMs. For the heavy slot, all three of us ran Anarchy, cause it's Anarchy, and Anarchy does Anarchy things. I also suggest having at least one person running blinding grenades. My go-to for this GM was Truth Teller, but you could also use an Ignition Code, or Wings Maul, or an Empty Vessel, if you were lucky enough to get one to drop. If you watched any of my GM videos from last season, then you know what's coming up here. Protective Light. This mod gives you a 50% reduction to incoming damage when your shields break. It could be the difference between dying or surviving in a situation. I don't run any content that has the contest modifier on it without also running Protective Light. Taking Charge To utilize Protective Light, you'll first need to become charged with light, and in my opinion, picking up orbs is the most consistent way to do so. Charged Up This will increase your stacks of Charged with Light, the more stacks you have, the longer protective light will stay up after it procs. I would suggest having someone run special finisher for a healthy ammo economy. You'll be spamming those blinding GLs a lot. Breach and clear. I'm sure you already know the power of this mod, and if not, just run it anyway. It's absolutely nuts and 100% worth having at least one person running it. Because Truth Teller is void, I opted to run Warmind's Decree, and because my Fatebringer has Firefly, I also ran Wrath of Rasputin in my build, but these are not necessary. Starting out, I would suggest taking a quick look around to see if there's a rally flag near you. Having a super right out the gate could be extremely useful, although it didn't happen for any of my group's runs. Start by having your Stasis Warlock throw his Bleak Watcher grenade. Fire off a shot from a Blinding Nade GL to help keep the enemies at bay, then start working on this first champion. Don't push too far forward right away. That'll spawn the next wave of adds. Push up only when you're ready. In the next area, there will be another Overload Captain first, followed by a Barrier Servitor. Drop some Anarchy at your feet, spawn the champs, clear the room, then push forward. This room is where the first of two mini-bosses resides. Use this rock as cover, make quick work of the snipers, take out the Overload Captain as soon as you can, then work on the mini-boss. Like in the beginning area, don't push too far or you'll spawn more adds and another champ. Once you're good, push forward and get ready to deal with a barrier servitor and another wave of adds. At this point, I would usually have my stasis super, so I'd pop here and control the add spawns while the other two worked on the champ. Once the room is clear, the energy barrier will despawn and you can go to the next room which has the second of the mini bosses. Again, use this rock as cover and don't push up too far. Pop and rotate your banner shields here. Take out the mini boss and the overload champ as soon as you can. Clear the rest of the adds, then push forward to spawn the next wave of enemies and another barrier servitor. 
Again, I'd pop my stasis super here to clear the adds and my teammates would work on the champ. Push forward and you'll get to this arena. There's nothing special here, just plink away at the enemies from a distance and be prepared for two different overload captains. One in the middle of the arena and another a little further up. Be mindful of the snipers and before long, you'll be in the Vex Milk bathtub that you gotta drain. If you've done the Fallen Saber Strike before, this plate is exactly like that Warsat. As in, the enemy spawns are tied to hitting a certain percentage on the plate. Take your time and use your supers if you need to, and before long, the Vex Milk bathtub will be mostly empty. Another Overload Captain will spawn below you. Stay up near the plate and start taking out the adds from a distance. Once it's clear enough, have one person run up on the right to spawn more enemies, then come back to the plate. Again, work through everything from a distance, and slowly start to push your way through the room. Once clear, you're in the boss room. And I'm sure you've heard the horror stories of this boss room. And they're all true. Start by taking out the Overload Captain and his minions, then get set up in the left room. This encounter is actually very simple to explain, but extremely annoying to execute. So here we go. This is where the Stasis Warlock and Blinding Grenades are going to shine. Freeze and blind the Mini Hydra as much as possible. Take out the first two Overload Minotaurs as soon as you can, and clear out the rest of the adds. Once it's just the boss and the Mini Hydra, damage the Mini Hydra until it goes away. At that point, another wave of adds will spawn along with two more Overload Minotaurs. Make quick work of them again, clear everything out, then you should be left with just the boss. Pop a banner shield and start damaging him until he goes away. Once gone, the next wave of adds and champs will spawn, along with the return of the Mini Hydra. I recommend everyone coming to the left side here to try and spawn kill this first Wyvern before the adds get too out of control. The Mini Hydra will come floating back into your personal space. Yet again, use Stasis and Blinding Nades to keep him in check. Kill the other Wyvern, clear the adds, and then start working on the two barrier champs. Have one person keep the Mini Hydra occupied while the other two kill the barriers. Once the barriers are dead, damage the Mini Hydra until it goes away. That'll spawn another wave of Wyverns and barrier hobbies. Again, go to the left side and spawn kill one of the Wyverns. Be prepared for another to show up randomly somewhere, and sauce that idiot as soon as you can. Clear out the rest of the adds, locate the two barriers, and remove them from the arena. Once it's clear, get ready for the return of Big Bad Bellman and two more overloads. Again, deal with the overloads as soon as possible, clear out the adds, and pop a banner shield and start doing damage to the boss. Once he takes enough damage, another wave of adds will spawn, along with two more overload champs. Deal with the champs ASAP, clear the adds, pop a banner, and start damaging the boss until he goes away. Once gone, have everyone meet up far left to spawn kill one of the wyverns. Do so as fast as possible, because Bellman will be coming back to annoy the shit out of you. And he brought two more barrier hobbies with him. The Mini Hydra is also back to invade your personal space once again. And there's another wyvern on the loose. Freeze and blind the Mini Hydra, locate and eliminate the missing wyvern, and clear the adds. Have one person get Bellman's aggro, while the other two work on the two barriers. Once the barriers are dead, focus on the Mini Hydra and get ready for two more wyverns and two more barriers. Rinse and repeat what you just did. Clear the room, one person take Bellman's aggro, the other two kill the barriers, and then it's time to focus damage on Bellman until he's dead. After all of that, the Glassway Grandmaster Nightfall is officially complete. Side note, if you don't care about Platinum, you can completely ignore the last two barriers and just focus on Bellman to get the clear. Completely up to you. You can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash LazarusC13 where I do GM helps for the community every weekend. Link is down in the description. If you found this video at all helpful, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. If not, hit me with that fat dislike. If you have any ideas that you'd like to share, drop them in the comments below. And Laz, out.